Are you ready? And I'll call to order the March 19th, 2018 board meeting for the Bristol, Tennessee Board of Education. Um, everyone is present, so we do have a quorum, and I will now call on Jason Horn to lead um, us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, I, I've got a young person here. Oh, for me. good. <laughs> Who knows it much better than I do? <laughs> <laughs> Let's pray. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I know that your last name has to be Walt, but what is your first name? I'm sorry? Thank you very much for leading us tonight. First, we will handle consent items on our agenda for adoption and approval. Um, the minutes of the February 19th, 2018 regular meeting, our financial reports, and the list of surplus obsolete items that we reviewed at the work session last week. Those are the items that we have on our consent agenda tonight. Do I have a motion to approve the consent items? I so move. Second. second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. Ms. Jenkins. Vice Chair Pyle. Yes. Mr. Lincoln. Yes. Mr. Butcher. Yes. Secretary Welch. Yes. Chair Harrison. Yes. We'll now have a hearing of our delegates and uh, Dr. Horn. Thank you. Hey guys, how are you all? Well, well thank, well, you. thank you. you. It's good to see you. Well, um, I'm Jason Horn, the principal of uh, Tennessee Online Public School. I just wanted to uh, thank you for the board's continued support of our school. We're now, believe it or not, in our sixth year. Next year we'll make the seventh, Amazing. if you can believe that. Which, you know, we have like a hundred or so years to go to catch up with some other schools. <laughs> but we're still, we're going strong and doing well. Uh, one thing I do want to recognize are uh, my TOPS full-time faculty who are here tonight. Lindsay Whedon, um, <laughs> Dr. Carrie Eubanks, Scott Lamey. Uh, they have decided to uh, grace us with their presences, and uh, <laughs> Dr. Eubanks will be joining me on the stage up here here in a second. Um, one thing I want to point out, look at that. Uh, we, we messed with the logo because we're doing our prom at the Knoxville Zoo this year. Oh. Saturday is our prom, <laughs> and uh, since we're a statewide school, we tend to rotate our prom around the state so all of our students have a chance to attend. Uh, in the four years and have part of that uh, great American culture that uh, is hopefully not dying off so much because of schools like mine. And, uh, but we uh, messed with the logo and I thought it looked really cool. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Eubanks did that and I've bragged on her for like a week since she's done it. <laughs> maybe, that, maybe that's what's going to go on our new t-shirts or something, but that looks really cool. Um, so that sort of leads into what I want to talk about. One of the problems that I wrote down uh, when we started our online school and all these people have basically been with us since the beginning is what do we do about socialization because that is a big part of school you know it's part of the it's not in the curriculum anywhere but it's the biggest part of school so what do we do if we're having students work from home on their computers how do we get them out into their community interacting with people because that's a very big part of success in the future. There are very few jobs where you don't have to interact with other human beings. So uh, one of the things that we came up with was our service learning program. So if you're a student at TOPS, you have to earn 25 service hours each year. And that means that you have to go down to some agency locally. And we do have some online opportunities for this as well that uh, Dr. Eubanks will discuss. But typically people go to soup kitchens, uh, animal shelters, different places like that, and they have to earn 25 years that year, every year. So if they stay with us from freshman to senior year, they've done 100 service hours. And they also have to write two journal entries about their service experiences, because we want them to have that reflection as part of it. Um, and so, and we've also developed ways for them to uh, 
ser earn service online. You can see us there uh, raking leaves. We do a, a local thing with the uh, Chamber of Commerce where we do a, a leaf raking for folks who can't rake their own yards and students come out and do that. And we usually have a little, a handful or two handfuls of kids show up for that and it's always a fun experience. But some of the quotes, and, and these are really long, this is bad PowerPoint form, <laughs> but uh, some of the quotes that we got from students uh, in their journals that I thought I would illuminate for you because they are kind of telling. You know, this first one is about uh, somebody who uh, encountered a man while working at a homeless shelter uh, when they were serving Thanksgiving, and he, uh, this man had cancer, and, and this student talks about how nice the man was and what kind of life lessons he learned from talking to that man. The second one is about um, working in a, um, I'm trying to think, like a Goodwill, a, a, thrift, a thrift store, and uh, talking about how they had social anxiety but realized that they had to overcome that to deal with the public that comes in. And, uh, you know, you, you can't uh, swing a cat by the tail these days without hitting somebody talking about anxiety of one form or another. And I really just thought that was interesting that the, the, the student learned that they couldn't just hide behind that desk, that they had to interact with the public uh, to do their job. And then the last one, uh, are some life lessons that the student learned, another student learned from doing their volunteer ex experience. And one of those lessons was to not sweat the small stuff, which I think is a, a really good lesson to have learned. So my point is, is that even though we're an online school, we are still giving students and really mandating that students get out and, and work with the community. And we've seen that make a big change in students. Students who have uh, anxiety and other uh, disabilities um, who are even working at animal shelters are finding that uh, therapeutic in a lot of ways and a great learning experience. So the one problem that we wrote down when we started this online school was how to socialize and I think we've found a good answer and kudos to Dr. Eubanks who uh, leads that effort for our school. Do um, you want to come up and talk about our new service focus? Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Carrie That's Eubanks. <laughs> I should change my name. <laughs> um, so something, you know, that we were thinking about, um, we actually went to TETC this past November and had some really amazing keynote speakers and amazing speakers in general. T Tennessee Educational Technology Conference. <laughs> Did I say that right? Okay. See, I, I know my own initials, y'all. That's about it. Um, <laughs> So we, uh, you know, we were sitting there and, and uh, one of our speakers really uh, hit this point home about, you know, we have communities and then we also have our online, our virtual communities, and they are very much as real as the communities that we live in and as the communities that we serve in. And so, um, you know, Dr. Horn and I had a conversation, you know, what if we could give our students opportunities to serve their online communities. I mean, think about all of the negative things that happen in these communities and how much, you know, negative things we put forward just by liking or not liking something or just by saying hateful things to each other. Um, we are a nation of media, social media, you know, and that's how we operate. And so by honoring those communities and recognizing those communities through our service, our students have the opportunity to make a lot of difference for a lot of different people beyond the, the people that they're touching hands-on in their communities. And so what we did was we wanted to have our students have the opportunity to give digital service learning or have digital service learning as part of their community service and service learning opportunity. Well, I'm stumbling all over my words. Um, but basically, what this looks like online is students can get on social media. Um, they look for opportunities to lift up other people. Um, they can interact with people. They can create content, um, videos. We've had students create newsletters about what it's like to be depressed and, and how to find help if you're thinking about possibly committing suicide. Um, they are sending positive messages out into the world just to, to help people's days be just a little bit brighter. And we want to honor that because we want them to understand, even more so than us, that 
being a digitally responsible person in their communities is so very important and it's something that they're going to be dealing with for the rest of their lives. And so um, we did bring this service focus um, into service learning this year and it's gotten a little bit of a slow start but it is starting to build momentum and uh, the returns have been great on that. Dr. Lilly, they won't let us um, use uh, positive comments for your snow call or non-snow call. <laughs> 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 You're probably thinking that, but that won't qualify. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get snow days, I mean, you know, on tops. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. Something else that we've uh, really been focusing on at TOPS is making sure that um, we can build culture with our students and we've got a lot of things in place. But one of the things that we have done this year, um, and I roped uh, Ms. Lindsay Whedon into that with me, was to create um, just a, a way for a mechanism for us to uh, acknowledge all the great things that our students are doing beyond their service learning, just, you know, hey, you passed your driver's test, this is awesome. Uh, you brought your ACT score up. This is such a great thing. Um, so I'm not going to show you this whole video because it's, yeah, I'm not going to show you the whole video. <laughs> yeah, we're nice folks at Tops. Um, but I am just going to pull up part of this just to kind of show you um, what we did. We, we, want, we want our students to, even though they're not in a physical bricks and mortar classroom, we still want them to feel like they are part of a larger community and we want them to feel the culture of what we do. And so this is our little way of giving back to our students. And I'm gonna fast forward through me and Elizabeth then and skip to the good stuff. Okay. Hey guys, I've got Miss Whedon with me here today, my partner in crime, and we are going to continue our marvelous shooting. Woo! And it's still <laughs> So Cora Wilson just found out that she is a semifinalist for the NSILY scholarship, which is for an entire academic year. It's huge. Her interview is in January to determine whether or not she gets the scholarship. And Cora, this is amazing news. Congratulations. edition of What's Up Tops. We love letting everybody know what you're into and all the great things you're accomplishing. And just so you all know, students, parents, faculty, we are just so proud of everybody and we love celebrating all of your accomplishments with you. Until next time. <laughs> so if we can ever get the archery and the horsemanship combined, we can be the Mongolians. But, uh, <laughs> but until then, we will just be happy with being uh, Tops. Uh, but, get, but again, we are making a difference in the lives of students. Uh, one thing I'll just point out is that none of this had to do anything to do with uh, testing that or anything like that, but really the souls of our kids, and that's important to us, because if we don't have that, none of the rest really matters. <laughs> <laughs> and congratulations on being a reward school this year. Thank you. Great job to everybody.
any comments or questions from the board? Well, I see you also have the high school teacher of the year. Yes, Delaney. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> See, North Carolina won the national championship mm -hmm. last year, and then now they're out of the tournament, so I didn't want to bring up everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure who, who is the North Carolina fan that you're mentioning that for. Just whoever's on TV. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> All right. We're not responsible for the comments of the audience. <laughs> <laughs> now we will have. Um, Comments from the public, which I'm assuming, Ms. Craddock, we have none. All right. We now have an item of new business, and Chris McCarty, who is um, the attorney for the Bristol, Tennessee City Schools Board, um, has a recommendation to make for us. Madam Chairman, um, members of the board, what I'm here tonight to present and essentially recommend to the board is a settlement agreement that we've been working on and would like to propose. And again, I'm asking as school council that the board consider it and hopefully approve it um, to go forward. And it's a settlement agreement with Mr. Jerry Poteet. I'll briefly describe that for you and for the public. Um, as the board knows, and as many of the people in this room know, Mr. Poteet served many years in Bristol City Schools in a lot of capacities, certainly many honorable years with Bristol City Schools. Uh, he was last a principal. There's been a very public situation that happened. I won't go into all the details of that, but, but essentially Mr. Poutine has been on an, a leave suspension status for a number of years now while all those things are working out in the court system and otherwise. Um, we've had some recent discussions to basically put an end to all that and allow this to be a situation that Bristol City Schools, the members of the community, the members of the teaching staff, uh, the members of administration can essentially move on from and so can Mr. Poutine. And we think we have a deal in place that really works for both sides. Um, when we look at this situation, my job as school counsel is not just to come in and tell you, oh, we're going to win everything, or every case is winnable, or every case is just, you know, my job is not to tell you always what you want to hear. My job is also to evaluate risk. When I look at this situation, when I look at the facts at issue, I look at the possibility of, you know, in a worst case scenario, a tenure act dismissal of Mr. Poteet because he was a tenured staff member, we have to look at, is that winnable? In this case, I can tell you quite frankly, I think there are, there's many situations in which I could see that the school system might win an action like that. There are also many situations in which Mr. Poteet would win an action like that. Uh, tenure is a very high threshold. There's a reason for that under the Tenure Act. When we look at that and we look at the fact that under that Tenure Act, should the school system lose a possible proceeding like that, we're looking at automatic lost wages over a number of years and hundreds of thousands of dollars in possible wages and even a lot more in legal fees and hearing officer fees that we have to hire as part of the act. So considerable amount of exposure. When we look at that, we look at Mr. Poutit's many years of service. We look at the fact that he's still ongoing with some other proceedings. What we have here is a deal that I think really works for both sides. Essentially it works like this. In exchange for essentially Mr. Poutit resigning and agreeing to retire from Bristol City Schools, he will receive $40,000 as a settlement and again allowing us to close this matter off. There is an interesting aspect to this deal though that should Mr. Poteet go forward in his, I'm going to call them parallel um, proceedings and win on two different venues, one before the Department of Children's Services and another before the Tennessee State Board of Education, should he win on both those accounts and be found to be either have those charges dismissed or just win outright on an appeal, in that situation Mr. Poutit would be due another $60,000 from Bristol City Schools for essentially proving in those venues, two of them, that he was innocent. Um, we think that is more than fair, certainly, again, giving him the benefit of the doubt. And should he prove himself innocent in two venues, we've agreed to pay him that amount. Um, those, that also works, as the board knows, because those are things that is, is easily for us to verify should he win on either of those venues. Um, that is the deal that's in place. Um, I would again recommend that the board approve that. I certainly would ask the board to, to consider it and have any discussion that they would like. It is not something that's easy for me to come before the board as school attorney and ask the board to spend public money. But in this situation, I can honestly look all of you in the eye and say, I think this is a good use of money because it allows the school system, its staff, its administration, its teachers to close the door, eliminates the stress of that, and also eliminates a great risk monetarily, much higher than what we're paying here 
should this go badly in any sort of legal proceeding. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCarty. So that we may have discussion, do I have a motion to approve the settlement recommendation? So moved. And do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Do you have any questions for Mr. McCarty? Any comments that the board members would like to make at this time? So just to confirm for us, this agreement would include a full and complete release of all claims against the Bristol, Tennessee City Schools. Correct. And his employment with our school system would end. Correct. Where he's been on suspension without pay. Should this be approved and should Mr. Petit um, sign it as well, which mm -hmm. we do believe there's a conceptual deal in place, then he would retire, retire effective March 20th, which is tomorrow. And you would not seek reemployment with our school system? He cannot under the agreement. Okay. Any other comments from the board members? We have considered this extensively. Um, we wish to close this chapter, not just for the release of claims against our school system, but we want our teachers, both retired and present, to know this is over. Our students, no one has to deal with this matter going forward. It's a closed chapter for the school system. Um, we have considered the dollar amount that might have to be paid to Mr. Poteet, the dollar amount that the school system might have to pay to attorneys to represent it in matters going forward. And frankly, this is an economic transaction, at least in my book, because it closes our liability and our exposure um, and allows everyone, including Mr. Poteet and his family and our family within the school district to move forward. All right, Ms. Jenkins. And this is a vote to approve the recommendation of the settlement agreement to be executed by the parties. Correct. Thank you, Madam Chair. Vice Chair Pyle. Yes. Secretary Welch. Yes. Mr. Butcher. Yes. Chair Harrison. Yes. Mr. Lankus. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. McCarty. We appreciate it. All right, now we have a report from our Director of Schools, Dr. Gary Lilly. Yes, thank you. So uh, last week was spring break and lots of people went lots of places, but not everyone did. We had um, staff members who um, taught intercession last week and we served a total of 190 students. Um, not all the students came every day, but uh, when they did come, they uh, were treated with um, uh, remediation <coughs> instruction in the morning and then enrichment STEM activities in the afternoon which was really cool. Um, we will be giving a, a full report to the board at a later time after we after we compile all that data. Um, today teachers came back and we had uh, a good in-service day and it was a combination of, uh, of system combined um, professional development and some school specific uh, professional development as well. Tomorrow students come back and uh, which will be um, interesting at the high school all high school students are involved in ACT um, activities. Um, at at uh, Tizzy High the freshmen and sophomores will be doing practice ACT tests. The uh, juniors will be doing the state mandated ACT test and uh, administer it on, on that tomorrow. Um, and seniors will be doing um, the work keys test. So that is part of the regional work ready community initiative that I know you've heard about before. And so our part of that is um, we're able to do that in conjunction with some partners, BTES and United Way. And uh, students who do well on the work keys will uh, receive the National Career Ready Certification, NCRC which is a great opportunity for them. So we're excited to uh, see how all, all of that works. And I know uh, TOPS will be doing ACT testing and you'll be heading out to uh, Murfreesboro as soon as this meeting <laughs> adjourns. So uh, good luck with all that too. Um, the final thing that I will uh, mention is that um, we have a district science fair and expo actually happening right this moment. And, uh, <laughs> So um, as soon as we adjourn, you're going to Murfreesboro, and I am going to the Frank Winston Auditorium, where it will be my honor to uh, announce the school and district award winners. So um, all of you are welcome to join us at that time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lilly. Are there any comments from the board at this time? 
Jim, I just want to come piggyback. Um, Jim said, you know, I just want to congratulate Scott Lamy as being district teacher of the year, and also Cheryl Littleton from Haynes, our host from View, and also Amanda. That's an awesome accomplishment, and I know they'll represent Crystal City very well. So. Thank you. I would like to comment, you know, recent tragedies in Florida, you know, school shootings, you, you're always anxious as a, as a teacher and certainly as a school board member about school safety. I mean, you can never do too much, but, you know, we, we, we do pay very close attention to it. But, you know, I feel as good as I can possibly feel for Bristol because our police department is so, so, you know, into our kids. It's like they're their own kids. So as far as that goes, I just think I'd like to, you know, compliment them and thank them for all the training that they do and will continue to do to keep us safe. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. Our next meeting is going to be April 16th at 6 p.m. Thank you for joining us.